I may get in trouble from our CEO for recording this video, but I'm about to reveal some of our most preciously guarded IP, and I'm gonna open the book and share it all with you. If you're still using Outlook for your business emails, well, you are a bit behind the time. It's time to make the switch to Gmail. And if you've already decided that that time is now, well, Google Workspace is one of the best choices that you can make for your email ecosystem. Now, the process to migrate is easier than you might imagine. But by the end of this, you'll see that there is some technical things you need to make sure you get right in the right order. And if getting technical projects perfect isn't really your forte, well, you might look for a helping hand to make sure you get the process right. Now, this is a technical guide. I'm gonna show you all the bits and pieces you need to do to get it working. But if you wanna invest a small amount of money to save a lot of time, you can invest in our migration service. Information about that is available below this video. I've done plenty of DIY in my life, and I'm the kind of person who gets halfway through a project and suddenly decides, they're not that interested in actually getting it done anymore. I thought I could save a buck doing something myself, but in reality, it's usually just best to call in the expert. If that's you, then I would recommend you skip this or at least just watch the process here, but then quickly get in touch with our team and they'll be happy to take you through the process of getting this done for you so you can focus on growing your business. All that aside, let's jump into the actual steps. First things first, we're gonna prepare for our migration. And that involves taking an inventory of all of the emails that exist inside your business. Now, we usually open up a spreadsheet and we make a list of all the users inside a company, including all of the domain names. If you've currently got multiple brands or multiple domain names that you're using for your business, you wanna make sure you capture everything. The most important thing is not so much where you wanna go, like what domains you wanna have in the future, but exactly every email address and every domain name you have now including group emails and including aliases as well, because you don't wanna set up a new email system and have bounce backs from customers that are using email addresses that aren't going anywhere if you've not captured all those emails and set them up in the new system. Now, one thing that you can do to make sure that when your data comes across, all of it comes across, is to check the number of emails that you have in each inbox right now. That means checking your inbox, checking your folders, and basically making sure that you have every one of your emails documented and effectively accounted for, because that means that once we've done the data transfer, you can be sure that everything has come across by counting the number of emails that appear in your new mailbox after you've completed a migration. At this point, it's also a good idea to estimate the size of those mailboxes. If you're using something like Outlook, there's an easy way to just check the size of your data file. You might also wanna check the size of your mail directory if you're on a Mac and try to get a bit of an idea of just how much email is there. That'll give you an idea of the ballpark of the number of messages and the total amount of data that you've got so that once it's transferred, you can make sure you've got everything. Now, keep in mind that data transfer between different systems can sometimes be compressed. It won't be exactly the same amount of data on each system, but you wanna make sure it's within plus or minus 20% once you're across. Google does compress and automatically archive some of your files in attachments, and so that means you're gonna consume generally less data on Google's ecosystem after you've moved your emails in. Now, before we do anything technical, we are gonna do a backup. You wanna make sure that you've got a backup of all of your important emails and your contacts as well. It's a good idea to include your calendar and of course your files. If you've got a manual way of backing them up, that would be a good idea too. Now we're mostly covering your email migration in this video, but you do wanna make sure you pretty much back up everything if you're gonna be moving into Google Drive as well. Now, if you're using Outlook, you can use the export feature to create a local backup. That's usually the easiest way going about it. Mac has Time Machine is usually the easiest way to just back up everything on your Mac. You wanna verify that that has been successful in both of those cases. Now, personally, I would hold on to those files forever. I usually just zip them and drop them in my Google Drive after I've completed a migration, just so I've got a additional backup for prosperity just in case anything happens. Very unlikely you would need to go back to it in the future, but it doesn't hurt to have it there. Step number two is to actually configure Google Workspace. All right, so you wanna go to the sign up page, get logged in, and then the first thing you'll be asked to do is to verify your domain. Google need to know that you are the person who actually owns this domain. So you're gonna add a small record to your DNS file on your domain name and that's gonna allow you to verify the domain. They're pretty straightforward to follow the instructions and you'll just log into your domain provider or your website host and add the domain name there. Now, the next thing is a little bit more technical and that is to add your mail server records to the domain. Now, we're gonna add DKIM, DMARC, 
and SPF records. Now, these are the anti-spam records to make sure that the emails that are sent are basically being verified that they're coming from a legitimate source, which is you. And so no one else can pretend to be you on the internet. They're very important to get these records right because you wanna make sure that you don't accidentally run into issues where you don't list them here and then you try and send an email from Google Workspace and the email doesn't get delivered. I've got dedicated videos on how to set these up. And so if you need some additional help with those, make sure you watch those videos on how to get those settings right. Importantly, we're not gonna change our MX records in our DNS. The MX records are called the mail records and they're the ones that we do in the last step when we're ready to actually have our new emails being delivered to Google. And we're not ready for that yet, so we will hold on the MX records just yet. Even though Google tells you to do it straight away, we're gonna wait till later. Part of this step is to set up your billing. You wanna make sure that you will get service after the trial, ensure there's a credit card added and choose the right plan that you're gonna go on to. My recommendation is for any businesses that you have at least the business standard plan. It includes features like shared drives, which is very important for securely sharing your data and recording of meetings inside Google Meet, which will automatically be saved to your Google Drive. The next step is to add all of your users. And we're gonna create user accounts for each one of our team members. Importantly, you wanna make sure that you add aliases or nicknames for each one of the users or any additional accounts. You wanna create any shared mailboxes like info at or sales at or support at your company that multiple people need to get access to and reply on behalf of. And you wanna make sure that you have the right permissions set up. Do some of your staff need to be able to reset the passwords of other staff? Well, you might wanna make them an administrator. You probably wouldn't make anyone else a super administrator of the account because that effectively gives them full control of Google Workspace, but you might give them the option to reset passwords or change and modify groups if you need someone to help out with your administration. Number three is to set up some basic security controls. And these are pretty much mandatory. We set these up for every Google account that we touch to make sure that our customers are protected. Now, you first wanna set up a two-factor authentication security policy. Very important, and my recommendation is to give your staff a small grace period to get two-factor set up on their accounts, but effectively, you wanna enforce that as a policy across all the accounts that everybody must have it. You may also choose to set a password policy to enforce special passwords. That's probably a good idea. And it doesn't hurt for at least once a year a password to be rotated and to have your team refresh a new password. It's just good password policy and practice. Finally, you can switch on pass keys to remove the need for your team to use passwords in some instances. This uses a fingerprint or a face recognition on their device to log in, making things a little bit easier and reducing the risk that passwords are exposed. Step number four, we're getting to the exciting stuff. Now it's time to migrate data. Now, if you're coming from Microsoft Outlook, well, you wanna download and install the migration tool, right? That's gonna to connect to your Outlook and it's actually going to suck up all the email in your Outlook, all of the calendars if you choose, and all of the contacts if you choose, and place that in your Google Mailbox. Now, this can take some time because it's limited to one email per second due to Google's API. And what that means is it can take days or sometimes even a week for this data to upload. But it can resume again if it fails for any reason. Just let it do its thing and chug away uploading the email. It's pretty simple to sign in and follow the prompts to upload the data. Now, there is a data migration service available if you're coming from a web-based or an online-based Microsoft Exchange server or Office 365. It's built into the Google Admin Console. You can access it for data migration and you can choose the most suitable method for your migration needs. Now, here's where I get a little bit conflicted in the advice that I'm giving because we actually use specialist third-party tools to assist with our migration. And there's lots of choices for what's out there and available on the market. And we use different tools for different stages and different particular scenarios for different customers. I would recommend you research some of these tools and consider using them instead of the built-in Google migration tools because we found in our experience, some of the Google tools don't have the best error handling. Sometimes they just kind of bug out for no reason. And considering our teams are running literally hundreds of migrations a week, we found that we prefer tools that run a little more reliably. If you're a micro business and you're just migrating a couple of accounts, it's probably fine to use Google's built-in tools. But if you're a larger team, my recommendation would be consider reaching out and working with our team on your migration. Now, once this is configured, it's time to hit the magic button and start the migration. We're gonna migrate emails, calendar events, and contacts, and you can do them in batches if you like, doing one type or doing a certain set of dates at a time. That's gonna be up to you, your internet connection, and how you wanna get work done. 
Most people who are doing this themselves do it over a weekend, so you can check in on it and you're not being distracted with work you're trying to get done at the same time as the emails are migrating. You also might want to pause Google Drive synchronizing to make sure you've got the full bandwidth of your internet connection to upload it. And if you don't have a fiber internet connection, this might be the time to go to a friend's place and use their faster connection to help make sure this goes as quickly as possible. Now, after the migration has been done, you want to do some spot checks and make sure that you've had a successful transfer. Count the number of contacts that have come across. Count the emails in your inbox and in your outbox and in your folders. Make sure that your calendar events are there for the past and also for the future as well. Once you're happy and you've verified that everything's gone across, well, it's time to start diving into your new Gmail account. Now, one of the first things we recommend people to do is to check their labels. Sometimes you need to do a bit of a cleanup or a rename on the labels to organize things. And you might wanna recreate some of your rules or filters that you have inside your Outlook into Gmail. Folders are called labels in Gmail and rules are called filters and they operate slightly differently. Folders actually are labels that can be tagged so you can have one email with multiple labels or multiple tags on that email. And filters let you do some pretty cool things and it even filters your email before you open your computer. So on Outlook, you usually have to wait for a rule to run after an email has been downloaded. Well, that all happens in the cloud automatically for Google. So if you say, I wanna block all emails from one sender, you'll just never see them even hit your inbox. If you open your phone, they'll be gone. I love that feature of Google. It's a good idea to get familiar with the search and we've got other videos on the channel about search stacking and using Google Workspace Search, which I recommend you check out. But search is a great way to get access to all of your history and you'll probably find after switching to Google that you spend more time searching and less time digging through folders to find your emails because the search is just so good. Using the advanced search by clicking the little button and opening the drop down menu allows you to get really granular with the kind of searches that you wanna run and it makes finding emails a breeze even if they are from years or even decades ago. If all of your history has been brought across into your Gmail account, you can search everything and you can even search right on your mobile app as well. There's no restrictions to how far back you can look. One of the great things about Google search being in the cloud is it doesn't clog up your local machine or your phone with emails and it can search more than just the limited to 30 days that Outlook or MacMail usually has. So you're really in a great spot with Google search once all of your emails have come across. Now we're on to our final steps. Step number six, is to provide some training for your team members. You wanna make sure that they are up to speed with Google. And for that, you can head to our website and go to our free Inbox Zero training. Now, this is a training that I've delivered to literally tens of thousands of people. And I've helped them to manage their inbox, get it down to zero every day, and just generally deal with the overwhelm of managing their emails that are coming in. Now, if you wanna learn and completely revolutionize the way that you are having your relationship with email, I recommend you check out that course. It's less than an hour to get through it. And the principles, if you follow them, will help you to manage your email overwhelm forever. Our very last step in the process is to actually go live. This is the point where we've migrated all of our email and we're ready to update our MX records. This means that we are gonna cut over our emails. They're gonna start being received in Gmail and they're gonna stop being received at our old host. Now, you wanna test emails are working in and out and try them to a Gmail address, try them to a ISP address, try them to a friend's address. Just triple check that emails are literally and actually coming in and out of the business okay once you've done this. And you wanna to continue to monitor your old inbox as well. It takes time for the DNS records to be updated all over the world. And so sometimes it can take a day or two even for all of your emails to be coming through to the new inbox. Now, what do you do if this happens? You've cut over your emails and you've got some old emails still going to the old mailbox. Well, if you want, you can run another migration. We call that a Delta migration, and that's basically designed to just pick up only the newest emails that have come across and dump them into your inbox. Some of those might double up from time to time as you do that, but it should make sure that you have zero data loss right throughout the process. Now, congratulations, if you've got this far, you are now up and rocking and rolling on Google in your Google Workspace app. If you've got your files stored in OneDrive, in Dropbox, or in any other platforms outside of Google Drive, it might be time to start migrating them over to Google Drive. We've got other videos on our channel on how to manage effective shared permissions and how to set up your group-based permissions inside of Workspace to make sure that you've got your files and your folder security configured correctly. 
We've got that covered in different videos and a specific migration video will be coming out to the channel sometime soon. If you've got a bunch of legacy data sitting in Dropbox right now and you wanna just shift it straight over to Google, there are online tools that allow you to do a cloud to cloud migration, or you can reach out to our team and ask for a cloud migration for Dropbox to Google Drive. It goes without saying, if you need help with any step of this process, please do not hesitate to reach out to our team. If you're in Australia or the United States, we have team ready five days a week online to take your call and help you out with your migration. You can click on the link down below this video, start a live chat with our team and start talking to a consultant right away for some help with your migration. If you'd like us to project manage a migration for you, right from a small business operator, if you're a sole or single business operator to large and even corporate sized businesses, we have solutions and pricing scales that will be suitable for you and your team. And I would say our team are the undisputed experts in our region and in many parts of the world in helping small and medium sized businesses migrate to Google. So it doesn't hurt to get some help with the experts. If you're new here, thanks for watching. Make sure you're sub and I'll see you in the next one.